Hey guys, so today I thought I'd make a video showing some interesting and uh, I guess unique or different items from my collection. Uh, I've already made three of these videos, but it's been uh, like a year and a half, I believe, since the last one, since part three. Uh, so if you guys want to check those out, you know, part one, two, and three, that would be awesome. And uh, basically what I do is I just get, you know, random items from my collection that maybe have a unique story or history or background and uh, it might be some stuff you guys aren't familiar with uh, but anyways I, you know, I like putting these videos together uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have some really interesting stuff in your collection and you know it really just I guess takes time for you know really kind of planning your videos and, and picking out certain items you know that would be uh, interesting to talk about and share with others um, but I've got kind of a variety of stuff here uh, on the table and uh, as you can see, this helmet here, uh, which is my favorite helmet in my whole collection, but it's a, in another video. This is probably like the fifth or sixth video that this helmet has been in. But uh, it's just got so much different things going on for it. You know, it's just, it's a really interesting helmet. And uh, so there's a, a reason why it's in this video, uh, just as it has been here recently in a couple of videos. But anyways, uh, I'm real excited to show you what's here. And kind of go over some stuff so let's get going all right so kind of like i said a kind of a variety of different things here to share with you today and uh, some of this stuff you guys might recognize obviously from other videos or maybe even my room tour um if you hadn't had a chance uh to check out you know my man cave i made a video it's actually been right at a year now um that i made a video of my new man cave because i had moved in August of last year and uh, I actually have a room to myself to display all my stuff so if you get a if you haven't you know get a chance uh, I would really appreciate if you check out my military man cave and uh, let me know what you think but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and get started right here this right here is really special and uh, some of you might recognize it some of you might not this is a US uh, backpack or you know a pack and this is from the Spanish American War era uh, this pack here is actually dated 1898, so you know it's at what 121 years old, and uh, overall it's in it's in good shape. It's got a D on there, which I guess that'd be D Company maybe, and there's an eight and a sixty. So you know I'm not exactly sure what the stencils mean, but uh, you just don't see stuff like this every day. This stuff, you know, we we you know those of us that collect World War II stuff, we know World War II stuff's getting harder to find. World War I stuff seems to be almost non-existent, so you can just imagine this is before World War I, right at the turn of the century. So, I mean, this stuff is very hard to find. And, um, it's actually, well, let me show you. Well, see, it says, inspected 1898. So, you know, that's just amazing, you know, and overall it's in good shape, you know. The leather's in good shape for, you know, being over a hundred years old. And, um, one thing that's kind of funny about this story is, first I'll tell you, I got this at a military show, uh, last year. It's 35 bucks. And, you know, I, I couldn't, couldn't wait to get the money out and purchase this thing, because I thought 35 bucks was a good deal. Anyways, when I got this item, um, it had some stuff in it, you know, and I'm thinking... I wonder what's in it exactly. You know, I'm not going to start digging through the bag while the, you know, the man, uh, you know, is trying to do the transaction with me. So, you know, I, um, I got it. I made the purchase. And later on, I looked inside. And as crazy as this sounds, this pack was full of a lot of boxers, like men's underwear. And I think, I can't remember, you know, it's been about a year and a half ago. I think it might have had a t-shirt or something there. But it had like several pairs of men's underwear. And I mean, that sounds funny. But luckily, they didn't have no skid marks or anything. They weren't dirty. I mean, they did have a musty smell. So I think they were in here for several, you know, quite a while. But I just wasn't expecting to buy, a uh, you know, a 1898 dated pack with, with underwear inside. But anyways, I mean, you never know what you're going to find. There's... A lot of horror stories and stuff out there but anyways moving on here I've got this is my 1942 Winchester M1 carbine and uh, this is a pretty desirable rifle it's got the original barrel and everything on here and um, one thing that you know basically the reason it's in this video is this checkering which unfortunately you know it, it hurts the value um, it's not a Winchester stock but 
I think it's a Saginaw gear or something. I can't remember. But anyways, but you see this etching on here. And it's, it's even up here. You see that? Now, again, it hurts the value, you know, but... I mean, they did it all on the underside and everything else. And overall, they did a pretty good job. This I don't necessarily would call this a Bubba job, but, you know, and I'm just wondering, like, was this done by a soldier after the war? Did he bring this rifle home, you know, or was this done by just some, you know, random person, maybe like in the 1950s or 60s or something? But anyway, it's pretty interesting there, the etching on there. I know, you know, a lot of soldiers would etch different stuff on their equipment, like places they've been and different stuff, so... I don't know. It's just one of those things, of course, there's so many uh, instances we come into where we're like, man, if only this item could talk, if only we knew where it was used or who used it or wherever, you know, but again, it's just one of those things we'll never know, but still, interesting, interesting rifle for sure. Moving on here, I've got this right here. Let me see if I can kind of hold it up. Got to be careful. It's old. This is basically like you know this up here i can't you know read the, that language but it basically means the empire of king neptune and basically when certain you know uh sailors crossed the equator they became what's known as a shellback now you know they had to go through the initiations and they had to go through hazing and you know just a lot of crap like that happens basically like you'd see in colleges before you join a fraternity but um I actually got this with a, a World War II grouping uh, not far from where I live here at an estate sale um, last year. And um, you see the, so, uh, the sailor was Harry Webster, and he was a seaman second class. And um, he crossed the equator on September 25th, 1944. So just last week or so, just past 75 years ago that he, you know, he passed it. And it's got this card here, which unfortunately it's turned sideways, but... Anyways, but so basically, like I said, before you become a shellback, you're like a polywog. And basically, you know, the, the equator is also known as crossing the line. You know, the equator where longitude and latitude meet and everything. And, uh, you know, not all sailors would get this. It's just the ones that want to, I guess, participate in the, the rituals or the rite and go through the hazing and everything else. But this is a really interesting piece, and uh, I'm grateful to have it in my collection for sure. And uh, it came with the grouping, and I think I gave, for this particular item, I think it was like 15 bucks or something like that. Somewhere in that range, but pretty good deal. Pretty interesting, different item you don't see. Moving on here, I'm going to show you what's in this notebook here. What this is, this is a World War I soldier grouping. Now, obviously, it doesn't have a helmet or gear or uniform, nothing, but... What it is, my mother-in-law actually gave me this, and what it is, my wife's great-grandmother. So my mother-in-law's grandmother, she was, you know, a collector. She dug in garbage cans and dumpsters, and she went to state sales, flea markets. She went everywhere looking for stuff, and all of this here was in the garbage. And I actually made a video on this, but it is just amazing, the history. Like, all this soldier's information, there's religious stuff in here, and, um... It's just unreal, and this is actually him right here. His name was, I think it was Nicholas Cummings, if I can't, if I'm, yeah, Nicholas Cummings. He was actually wounded during World War I. He was uh, hit in the shoulder by machine gun fire, and um, I mean, this is just amazing. A lot of this stuff is dated from the teens on up to the 20s, and I, I actually put it in this notebook because it was just, you know, basically pieces of this and that, but I mean, it's got all kind of VA stuff, and I mean, it's just amazing the history of this soldier here, like stuff from headquarters, U.S. Marine headquarters, and talks about all, the, you know, the battles he was involved in, and I mean, it is just amazing, and um, it's got like his, like, soldier's pay books, and like there's some negative photos in here, and envelopes from letters, uh, it's actually got his, his glasses in here, believe it or not, his glasses are in there, and uh, that's actually him right there. But he uh, he passed away. I, I'm trying to remember. I think he was in his 40s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I did make a video on this while World One grouping score. So if you want to check that video out, I mean it's just amazing. And you know my mother-in-law gave me this. I mean there's a lot of history on this soldier here. It's just it's just unreal. So I'm thankful to have it. 
Moving on here, I got this. Uh, this is a World War II uh, Marine. It's called a personal effects bag. I got this from a, a longtime collector, a man that passed away, but uh, he, you know, he had all kind of stuff that he got a, a lot of it from original World War II veterans. But um, this basically, when a soldier, you know, was killed in action or maybe even wounded, sent to a hospital, definitely killed in action. You know, their personal stuff that came maybe off their off their person. You know, different things that could be sent home to the family. They got this personal effects bag right here. Moving on here, I've got this World War One a canteen and cup set up. Uh, I got this at an estate sale uh, earlier this year, or it's been right about a year ago. I paid twenty five bucks for it. And what's cool is the cup is engraved. You got England, France, Belgium, Germany. Um, you've got that's the soldier's name, Hugh Knott. You've got Iceland and a couple other countries. You know I can't pronounce them, but um, it's just really really cool. Um, you know, to have it etched and everything, this, this soldier served in a lot of different countries, and I, I love seeing stuff like that. Moving on here, check this out. This is a Marine Veterans, uh, ring. See, it's got the Tun Tavern there, 1775, and check this out, Iwo Jima, 1945, and then it's got the, you know, the Earth Globe and Anchor United States Marine Corps around there, and, uh, this ring... I actually got from the granddaughter of the World War II veteran, and uh, unfortunately he passed away several years ago, and, um, you know, she's kind of going through uh, his house. His wife, which is her great, grand, her grandmother, I believe was like 106 or 104 or something like that, really, really old, but anyways, um, she was sp supposedly, you know, kind of kind of going through the house and everything. And um, and she said she thought there was some more military items, but honestly, it's been like two years. And I've reached out to her a couple times here recently, but haven't really heard much in response. So maybe one day she'll come across some more stuff, you know. But I mean, it's just amazing. I got the, I paid thirty bucks for this ring, and uh, the soldier was wounded on Iwo Jima. She said she knew that for a fact that he was wounded. Um, so you know, it's kind of cool to get that. Which you know, it's always it's always nice for items to stay with the family. You know, medals especially and different things like that. But, um, I mean, you know, there's those families that you know, just don't really care about it, you know, or, or don't don't see the, the point or, I don't know, you know, it's just really sad sometimes when people part with stuff, you know, but, I mean, it is what it is. Moving on here, here's my favorite helmet again. It's my Pacific Medic Corpsman helmet, or, you know, Pacific Corpsman helmet. Uh, this was on there the other day because I mentioned the short chin strap. Check out that video, Things You Might Not Know. Now, the reason this helmet is on this video is what's interesting about it is right in here, it's double stamped. It's, uh, there's actually, it's actually 4463, but both of the fours are very lightly stamped, but you see it, you see you got the 6633, but I'm telling you, with the magnifying glass and flashlight, there's a 44 you can barely see, so 446633, so obviously the heat stamp is 463 right it was hit twice struck twice but what's interesting though is i noticed this look down here it's actually struck a third time it's four six three and it struck under the rim so you got the two up here and then they struck it down here you can only see the top half of the three numbers but it's definitely four six three and so i mean i don't know if they they made a mistake up here and they went ahead and put it down here and it ended up getting covered up by the by the rim but just really cool that it was struck three times, you know. Obviously, it was probably human error, I'm sure, but still interesting piece. Lastly, I want to show it's another helmet here. Um, World War II helmet. This one's a Schluter. And a look at the inside of this thing. This thing has definitely been... It's had a fire in it, for sure. It's all full of ashes and stuff. Maybe a soldier was using it to keep warm. I mean, who knows, but it has definitely had a fire going up inside of this. But honestly, that is not the reason why uh, I got it in this video. Um, what I wanted, actually, how would I pay for this helmet? I paid fifty-three dollars for this helmet. We came with the liner. We took the liner out for the video, but so it's been cooked in. But look, what do you notice about this helmet? Does anything stand out? Yeah, it's got some discolorations and stuff. Don't see anything it's towards the front here. All right, I'll just go ahead and tell you, this bullet was hit by, I mean, this, I'm sorry, this helmet was struck by a bullet, was grazed. So I'm holding it back here. Do you see it in the top left, like straight above my thumb? I'm bringing it in. Right there. 
and it's actually got a small crease you can barely see it I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but it's a small indention but that 100% is a bullet graze can you see it right there so the soldier evidently was wearing this helmet and it glanced off of off of his head you know off his helmet it's definitely a bullet graze there it's awesome now you know a lot of times we get helmets with different damage and stuff and a lot of times it's not necessarily battle damage it could be from just soldiers using it as a hammer or whatever else but that's really cool to have a bullet struck helmet for sure but anyways guys i'm gonna wrap this up thank you so much for watching these videos i uh, hope you're liking this content and uh, i'm gonna continue to make these videos and um uh, you know, I just love doing this stuff. So y'all keep encouraging me, sharing my videos, liking, commenting, and please continue to, uh, to you know, to like I said, share my videos and uh, tell your buddies about it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you.